All right, welcome back to the show. George Jackie, Don Bailey Jr., Dave Sanderson, in charge of rowing at the University of Miami. This past weekend, you know what this past weekend was? You're looking at me like, what in the hell are you going to say here? It was the head of the Charles, which is a great, I know this much, that is a great race. It's a great race for rowing. It's in Massachusetts Mm -hmm. on the Charles River. It was this past weekend. And uh, largest two-day regatta in the world. And the University of Miami had the best finish in program history at the head of the Charles. It is world famous. And the UM went there and did well. And uh, Dave Sanderson is with us. Dave, am I correct about that? You're you're absolutely correct. Yeah. Please don't encourage him, Coach. Please. <laughs> no, he's got everything correct. He's I, perfect. I, I, the, I, Just as you wrote it. The, no, no. I know about the head of the Charles. It is... It is a it is a spectacular regatta, right, Coach? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a spectacle for sure, and it's uh, it's it's definitely a a, a destination event and uh, a, a really important event in the rowing world for all ranges of rowers. So it's big for us as, uh, you know, for our college athletes, but it's also big for international competition and high schools and uh, older folks masters, and it, it's a it's just a big deal in the rowing world. Uh, rowing is very popular in the Northeast. The Schuylkill Correct. River in Philadelphia is a yep. gigantic, gigantic regatta there. How is it being received uh, in the South? The University of Miami's had a program, uh, what are we into, about 10 years now? Uh, well, actually, no, actually, rowing started here at the U in 1986. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, so it's been around a while. Um, at first, it started with men's and women's rowing, and then it, it migrated to just women's rowing. Um, uh, so, yeah, rowing has been this ever-growing sport here in in the South, particularly in South Florida. There's a there's actually a lot of high school programs, um, and then a couple of universities, um, obviously throughout Florida, but but also in South Florida here. You've been here since 2013. Uh, That's what what has that experience been like for you building this program? Oh, it's it's been really rewarding. I mean, I think it's a beautiful place to to row. So we've got this incredible body of water to train on. Um, so it's really fun showing that to uh, to you know prospective athletes and um, trying to find the ones that are really going to help fit fit the program and and push us to the next level. So. It's been a great process. We've got some incredible athletes, incredible people on the team. Um, I'm looking forward to a really good year with them. Coach, take us through the recruiting process. How, how does that go for this sport? Yeah, it's really interesting. So you kind of have two tiers of people. Um, you've got some folks like many sports that have been doing it a real long time. Uh, and so more so even now than, say, 10 years ago, there's, there's kids trying this out in middle school and then migrating to high school. Uh, and, and getting a bunch of experience. So we're obviously looking at those folks. Um, they've taken a lot of strokes. They put a lot of miles in on the water, got a lot of racing experience. Um, and those that could be uh, kids here in the United States or internationals. We've got a number of international students on the team from all over the world. Um, and then there's another, another tier of rowing, which makes it pretty intriguing, which is that we've got a lot of sort of transplant athletes. So they may have been a swimmer or a volleyball player or, uh, or a, a track athlete. And uh, somewhere along the line in high school, they may have transitioned uh, and picked up rowing really not that long ago. And so with that kind of group of people, there's a ton of athletic potential there. Uh, and we just pretty much have to teach them a little bit more about rowing. They may have a year or two under their belt. And we take a look at them more as an athlete than as a rower and see if there's you know a person that we can develop over their four years so the team is a mix of folks like that and you you mentioned uh your home base it's miami beach it's indian creek so correct uh, that's a pretty yeah. good way to recruit it's incredible yeah i mean yeah when we take a recruit out in the in the coaching motorboat and and you know you, you get to see downtown the view of downtown from the water uh, it's it's incredible, and we do row early in the morning, so actually it, it's pretty cool to see downtown lit up. Um, and then they turn around the other way and look at, at the sun rising over the over the ocean. It, it can be a pretty incredible spectacle, and they they get to row by you know the Fountain Blue Hotel and some cool landmarks like that. But then 
most importantly, from just an athletic and rowing perspective, we've got a great body of water to row on. I mean, it's about three miles long. Uh, the Indian Creek's about three miles long. It's usually really calm, really good training water. So it's a, it's a great place to row. It's a great place to train. Coach, I believe you had, had your college uh, experience at Yale and, and were involved in rowing there. How, who got you into it, and, and how did you decide to stay on the path as a coach? Yeah, um, yeah I, was, I was really fortunate. I had a great collegiate experience myself. I, you know, here's, I got into rowing because uh, it was a little bit before high school in, in eighth grade, and basically one of my, one of my buddies – from middle school, you know, we would go ride our bikes around the neighborhood and just goof off and have a good time. His parents put him in a, in a rowing, learn to row class one summer. And all of a sudden I didn't have my buddy to, uh, you know, ride bikes around the neighborhood. So I was like, I'll try this rowing. And I signed up for a class and, and, and that was it. Um, I kept going through it and got competitive with it. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I loved everything about it. You know, it was kind of a boathouse rat would do my, do my row and, and then maybe do my homework at the boathouse, that kind of thing in, in high school, and just loved it a ton. And uh, carried on into college and couldn't think of anything else to do other than to keep keep going with the sport. And once I was done competing, obviously the natural transition is to coach. I think it's a grueling sport. I mean, I, you got to be – when you talk about recruiting or getting people to, to participate in your sport, uh, I would imagine you need to find athletes that – have endurance, mental endurance and physical endurance. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, we're, we're definitely looking for, for athletes. So people that can perform physiologically, but the, the mental aspect is, is definitely huge. Um, you know, it's well, like a lot of sports, you, you don't actually get to compete a whole lot. So there's a ton of training. There's a ton of preparation um, and then all of a sudden the race is, you know, about six and a half minutes long and it's done. And so you've got to really be in it, uh, you know, and trying to perform optimally every day. That's not necessarily your peak. You're just trying to get everything you can out of each training session. So then you can be ready, you know, for ACCs at the end of the year for a peak performance. Coach, so if you had... In order to... oh, go ahead and finish. I'm sorry. No, just in order to do that, you absolutely have to be mentally mentally strong if you were going to pick another sport where you would say this type of athlete could cross over and into rowing which one would it be to give us a little perspective on the on the type of person you're looking for boy that's a great question um so i've seen i've seen athletes transition really well from a ton of different sports and if you can believe it i've actually seen athletes transition all the way to the Olympic level, having really not done sports, but if you had to hold me to it, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of swimmers do real well in rowing. Okay. Um, I think that that comes from uh, a similar sort of sort of training regimen where they're just putting in lots of time and miles in a pool, and ultimately the the race is is pretty short. So mm-hmm. I think that there's a correlation there. Um, some middle distance runners. Uh, have done really, really well as well because their actual competition length kind of mimics our our race. So you compete against ACC schools. Uh, let's let's uh, discuss a little bit about the competition inside the ACC and your expectations for this year. Sure. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a really strong conference uh, in rowing for sure. Uh, University of Virginia is is the top of the top of the pack there they've they've been the the perennial uh, uh strong program for a long time um and uh so they sort of set the standard within within the conference and you know we're just we're trying to do everything we can to uh to get up to and ultimately surpass that standard um right now i think our goals for for the upcoming season are going to be Definitely some medals at ACCs in um, in our, our NCAA class boats. And then for the entire program, we'd like to put all of the boats in the grand final. So we had most of the boats in the grand final last year. Um, this year, we'd like to put all of them in there. And then once you're in the grand final and we've prepared you um, and you can be in the race, then you can have a chance to race for the medal. 
Coach, what was it like for you being on the United States national rowing team? What was that experience? Oh uh, yeah, I mean that was that was pretty special. I mean it was definitely a really exciting time. Um, it's you know when you get to compete at the world level, the world championships. That's obviously the biggest stage out there. So um, so you're you're with the best of the best, which is great. And I think besides the actual level of competition and the level of training was amazing because that you're just that's all you're doing. I mean, there is no real professional rowing per se, but when you're trying to prepare for the national team and you're on the national team, I mean, it's as if you're a professional athlete. And I, I just love that just day in and day out. Just all we had to do was train and row and figure out how to make the boats go fast. I mean, it was a, just a great, simple, simple life. And it was uh, just a lot of fun to, to push and see how fast we could make boats go. Coach, you've been a great guest. Thank you for being with us. And by the way, Don laughed at me. I put my paddleboard in the pool to practice. Hey, hey, I makes sense to me. There's a, you know, there's a, there's a pool. There's water. There's a, something that floats. Got to start somewhere. <laughs> Coach, please do not, do not encourage him anymore today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. yeah, that was the advice at the top of this. You're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. All right, Coach. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. the best of luck. Thank you. Take care, guys. Appreciate the time.